what those impacts are like. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this talk. So I'm going to turn on the, uh, the recordings on. That's good. So without further ado, this is Irina Nicolescu um, from UCL. And uh, I, yes, uh, are you OK to take us forward with that? Yes. Yes, of course. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome. Thank you so much for um, joining uh, us today. I'm going to share my screen so we can uh, we can start the session. OK. I'm going to load the slides. Can you see my slides in uh, full screen? Yeah, that's brilliant. Yes. OK. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. OK, so yeah, um, thank you so much, Jim, uh, again, for inviting me today. This is uh, really exciting and um, I'm really glad that we have this hour to talk about digital education and systems thinking. I'm a, a senior learning technologist at UCL. I previously worked at the uh, University of, of Surrey as a learning designer and manager. Um, and the outline for today's session um, is, is we're going to start with um, like a short overview of systems thinking, um, also look at the high level definition, uh, then we're going to move on to an individual activity so we get to know each other better and see who joined today's session and why. Um, um, after that, I'm going to uh, present a little bit about why I think um, systems thinking is very relevant to digital education. Um, and then my favorite part uh, will be uh, a group activity. Hopefully it will be your favorite part as well. We're going to get a chance to actually practice using a systems thinking model and look at some um, challenges that we're having in education. Then I'm going to wrap up with a group discussion and talk about potential next steps. So what I am really hoping uh, from today's session, uh, for those of you who are completely new or fairly new to systems thinking, is for this session to, to act as a taster, to give you a really um, a short introduction to this. For the more experienced colleagues, I hope you'll get a chance to collaborate and share some of your insights and experiences with uh, systems thinking. And um, lastly, for us um, in, in the wired, uh, wild, um, wider digital education field, did I just say wild digital education field? Yeah, probably that's that also that's, that's applicable. Um, discuss whether systems thinking is uh, an approach that could help us and see whether anyone else wants to explore this more. But before I say systems thinking one more time, I just want to make sure uh, we have a working definition for today because there are so many ways of, of defining systems thinking. But I chose um, this one today. It's a very popular one in the field by Peter Senge. Um, and it says that systems thinking is a discipline for seeing holes and it is a framework for seeing interrelationships rather than things and also for seeing patterns of change uh, rather than static snapshots. Um, and again, adding to that definition, a way of understanding systems thinking is also by looking at a different type of thinking, such as linear thinking or analytic thinking. Um, and I just want to make a disclaimer that I think that linear analytic thinking and systems thinking are equally valuable. Um, However, a lot of, of things in our culture and working environments tend to promote and reward linear thinking a bit more. So this is why we have to be more intentional with developing a systems thinking approach. So, for example, when we're working uh, or, or we are in a meeting, try to focus not just on the elements, um, but maybe on the relationship between these elements as well. So this is a, snash, a screenshot from the session that Jim mentioned at the start of the of the talk. Uh, this is where we first met as part of this um, GIST Digital Community of Practice event. Um, I proposed looking at um, the GIST Digital Capabilities Framework uh, through a systems lens by suggesting some questions that can help us think about the relationships between um, parts of the framework. And um, 
afterwards Jim uh, reached out and, and invited me to collaborate. So uh, I just want to say a quick thank you um, for this again, uh, Jim. It's much appreciated. And thank you again, everyone who joined today. Um, let's let's see. Um, before we move on to, to the Mentimeter, we find out more about each other. I'm going to tell you a bit um, about my journey with systems thinking. So um, even without realizing um, my journey with this started um, as part of my undergrad in sociology and film, because the theories that I was um, really interested in um, took a systems uh, lens approach, such as intersectionality. Then in my master's in higher education and learning design, um, through learning about educational theories and also having a lot of practice with learning design patterns and, and workshops and frameworks, um, I got to see the relevance and importance of, of systems thinking a lot more. And then by working in higher education for nearly 10 years and having um, different roles, uh, learning designer, technologist manager, also doing teaching and research. Um, and especially by working on university-wide projects, I often found myself uh, benefiting from uh, pausing and, and stepping back and seeing what I can use and, and abstract from um, different um, approaches that look at the relationship between things. Um, so lastly, um, throughout my journey, and uh, this will be the case, I think, uh, I don't know, even after I retired, because I am a lifelong uh, learning uh, nerd and um, I will continue uh, getting involved in projects even outside of work such as the Design Justice Network, or you know, just do courses that are related to systems thinking. Okay, so now um, I'm gonna stop sharing screen. Um, after, um, actually, if I stop sharing screen, you might not be able to get a QR code. So Jimmy, if you could put the link to the Mentimeter activity in the chat, please. Um, yeah, so people who want to join via the link can do that. Otherwise, please feel free to get your uh, um, device, your phone, and um, I'm on it. use I'm the on QR it. code. Okay, there we go. perfect. Stop sharing. Here we go. I can see people are joining and voting. Excellent. Okay. So yeah, the first question, just really to see how long have you personally known about systems thinking? We'll, we'll give this a um, few more uh, seconds because I can see results are still coming through. Got quite a few people who have known about it for more than 10 years. It's very exciting and equally exciting. Um, many people who are learning about it today uh, I'm somewhere uh, in in between uh, five to ten years um, currently. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next question. I'm just really curious in what context um, you discovered systems thinking and was it as part of a course or some CPD from a colleague or in a in a work context outside of work? Uh, by working on, on different projects or maybe in different fields which aren't related to education or was it just like randomly on Twitter or um, through an article or a book? I, If I remember well, I think the first time I heard about systems thinking as a field, as a theory, it was through um, a work context through colleagues at Surrey. So I can see that actually uh, from a colleague and through a work context um, is the most popular option. Okay, great. Um, let's move on to the next question. I'm really curious to, to hear why did you join today's session? You want to learn about systems thinking? Um, do you want to connect with other people who are interested 
in this approach. It could be uh, more than one reason as well. Or none, as I can see someone said in the chat. Okay, fantastic. I think there's one more question that I prepared. So just select all that apply to you. Um, this is again just to understand a bit more about who do we have today um, joining us. Is it um, people who are new to systems thinking? Um, do we have anyone who's teaching and or researching systems thinking or something related? And um, how many of you regularly attend events um, related to this or have done projects um, where taking a systems lens approach was helpful? Okay, so got uh, most people um, who joined today because they want to learn about systems thinking and uh, I think eight people said they've done projects uh, where taking a systems lens was helpful. So um, I'm just going to stop sharing screen because um, I think now it would be really lovely if uh, those of you who have experienced using systems thinking at work, um, or outside of work could share uh, a bit more about the context and was it helpful in what way did it bring any challenges so maybe we can start with uh, one volunteer the end uh, systems thinking and education when it comes to mm -hmm. uh, to gen ai and um, the carbon footprint of that again that is another example of why systems thinking is useful because we're looking at this technology in relation to the wider context education and beyond so thank you so much Lorena hopefully I will we'll keep in touch Definitely. anyone else wants to unmute and share going back to what you also said um, Jim at the start of the session I think it's a bit related to what Roger uh, said um, I can't remember how you phrase it exactly if you if you want to unmute, but just because uh, I don't think everyone joined uh, by that stage, but um, you ha have the sense that maybe we are lacking approaches in digital education or or a common language or a toolkit or I don't know how we um, wish we could refer about it, but um, is this, am I paraphrasing it right, Jim? Yeah, perfect. Yeah, uh, just um... It's all thinking tools, isn't it? It's ways of uh, looking at problems, and and we've, I think we, the the vocabulary and the the different methodologies that we can use, the the better. Um, so uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, amazing. I think we have time for one more person. If there's, um, I, I see people have been sharing via the chat as well, which is fabulous. Um, so. Emma came across came across this via a master's in information systems. Yes, that's it. It's, um, actually really um, established there. And um, okay, I'm just reading what Martha was saying about um, how it's interesting. It helps us review ways of uh, um, applying systems thinking in education. Would you, Emma or Martha, would you want to add uh, something um, or would anyone else want to share about their experience with systems thinking? This, okay, I think the fact that no one else is unmuting or putting their camera on is a sign of uh, it's okay, no more sharing. But um, thank you so much, everyone who has volunteered so far. Um, let me go back to sharing my screen. Okay, um, can you see my PowerPoint again? 
Morris, could someone unmute and confirm? Yeah, I, that's great. I that's okay. great. Thank yeah. you. Perfect. Okay, so um, I think yeah, in the blurb of the event, um, I mentioned there's a hyper on systems thinking, but um, how someone mentioned in, in, in the chat, actually systems thinking is um, extremely established as a theory and also as a practice in so many disciplines and fields. Um, yeah, some very popular examples are cybernetics, engineering, ecology, biology, um, sociology, but yeah, the, the list goes on. There's so many fields that use a systems thinking approach or, or something related, such as, I don't know, complexity um, theory. Um, so we've got, I think someone was also sharing about their experience with healthcare, sustainability, um, got climate work. And also many organizations nowadays are starting to highlight the importance of systems thinking and almost framing it as the skills that um, it would that individuals would benefit from developing. So there's many articles from yeah, uh, places like the UN or the World Economic Forum and a lot more design and research agencies that are actually even building roles around systems thinking. So roles such as system innovation managers or, or system um, changers. So it's, it's actually also becoming um, like a, a role um, that you could have. So um, this visual um, that I selected is overwhelming and has a lot of information on it, um, but that's okay. The, the purpose of it is just to, to show you that it's a really complex field. It's evolved in the West from the 1940s. Uh, obviously the, the picture in the map would be even more exciting and complex if we took a non-Western approach, which is something that I really want to focus on in the next years, um, really understand a bit more um, systems thinking through, through a non-Western lens as well and get some references that aren't from the West. So if anyone has any examples, uh, please um, put them in the chat or um, share them uh, by email later. Um, and I have included this resource and everything that I'm showing today in the slides that uh, will be disseminated along with the recording. So this is the, the part where I might come across a bit preachy. That's not my intention. I'm just really passionate and have um, benefited from um, take, taking a systems thinking approach uh, while working in digital education because I really think it can help us navigate complex problems, um, you know, transition through this post-COVID fatigue um, that we are in the middle of, um, and help us distinguish between urgency and a sense of urgency, because I think, especially with AI, um, there, is, there is a lot that um, I think sometimes can feel very urgent, but in, in, if you step back, you could realize that actually maybe in some cases it's just a, a sense of urgency. And I think because we have so many different roles in digital education, which is which is great. Um, however, sometimes we can work a bit more in silos. If we were to use some of these frameworks from, from systems thinking, we could collaborate more and maybe challenge some of these silos. So maybe this could be um, a way forward for professional development for some people. Um, who work in, in digital education and in higher education. Um, I prepared this slide um, as a trigger warning, because if you do end up um, reading more about systems thinking after today's session, you might uh, come across a lot of jargon, a lot of abstract um, theories, um, and like, you know, with learning anything new. There might be some discomfort and some difficult conversations, um, but I think um, as, as a community, we can definitely learn and there's a lot that we can gain from, um, from systems thinking. So there's one last thing uh, I prepared for us today before we move on to the group activity, which is some common distinctions that are used in systems thinking. Um, across many fields. So for example, uh, thinking about um, holes as opposed to parts or relationships uh, and interconnectedness as opposed to looking at things in isolation 
or in a way that's disconnected. Um, and I just want to say that using and, and shifting towards using this um, systems of lens can help us um, navigate some um, some challenges. Um, but that doesn't mean to say, again, just going back to the disclaimer I made that linear thinking is wrong or, or limited, actually, by focusing on something and sometimes even creating a silo, it might be the best thing that we can do in that context. The purpose of today's talk and the purpose of us upskilling ourselves in systems thinking is to offer another perspective and another way of working with our challenges and being able to, to shift between working more in a linear and, and isolated and focused way in a more interconnected way, um, I think can really help us with the um, more increasingly more complex challenges we have in education. And I'm sure that many of us, um, most of us on this call, have used some of these distinctions, maybe without um, realizing. So I actually took two approaches from this visual, parts in isolation and holes in relationships. Um, and I prepared an example. Uh, that hopefully is, is relevant to uh, many of us on this call. So creating guidance for educational technology or a digital tool. Um, if we look at that tool in isolation, we might end up providing only detailed and linear written guidance um, that focuses mainly on the tool and on the technical aspects. However, if we look at that tool uh, in relationship with other tools and the learning and teaching context in which it exists, we might end up using different delivery modes because we are acknowledging the workload and schedule of academics. And we might also consider whether this tool overlaps with other tools. And then maybe we need to acknowledge this in our guidance and even create, um, as a result of this acknowledgement, a new set of, of resources. OK, so now um, getting close to the group activity, um, I'm just going to explain what we will be doing in breakout rooms. Um, so I prepared this model, which is um, used in a lot of systems thinking groups. It's the iceberg model. So it's encouraging us to acknowledge what's seen from the outside, what's visible, the tip of the iceberg, so the event. Um, that's like an action, something that happens and everyone can see and go a bit uh, underneath the surface and see what was happening that led to that um, event taking place. Were there any patterns, um, like repeated behaviors, any structures, um, formal or informal or mental models? Um, so by that we mean um, maybe values, personal values, or uh, beliefs that people have that led to that thing happening. And this is a worked example with the iceberg model, looking at a cold, which is what I'm pretty sure everyone on this on this call uh, caught a cold at some point. Um, and using a systems lens to look at the cold, in, in some situations, maybe for some people, they've been catching more colds when they've been sleeping less. So that's the pattern. They sleep less, they catch more colds. But then if we go um, a, a look at, at a, a bit more detail, what are some of the structures um, related to this? Maybe there's more stress at work. Uh, maybe um, some people aren't eating well or they have difficulty accessing healthy food. And then Again, what could be a mental model that could lead to, to these structures and patterns um, happening? Maybe some people think that career is the most important piece of their identity, or that the healthy food is too expensive, or that rest is for the unmotivated. Um, so again, this is an, an example of taking something as common as a cold and applying the iceberg model. 
for the group activity that we're going to do in breakout rooms for five minutes, because the purpose isn't to get all the right answers, but just to have a go at using uh, this model and the uh, assistance lens to look at an educational challenge. So um, if you could please choose your own educational challenge in your group, the more specific, the better for this activity, and then use the iceberg model and Think about examples for each level. You could maybe take notes or um, maybe someone could just uh, keep track of the, the examples you're um, sharing in the group. If you have any questions when, when you're in the breakout room, if you're really stuck with the activity, please use the main chat and um, ask me a question and I'll get back to you via the chat. Um, and before we start the breakout rooms, um, I just want to say that I've prepared some considerations, some prompts for you to help you when you're in um, the breakout room. So some questions that can help you analyze your educational challenge um, through the level of patterns, the level of structures and mental models. And if you can't decide what educational challenge you want to focus on, um, there are some examples on this slide um, of some, yeah, pre-prepared educational challenges that I'm sure many of us have encountered or have um, yeah, had experience uh, tackling. So I'm going to add this uh, text to the chat so you can access it when you are in the breakout room. Here we go. So now hopefully you can see the prompts for each level and the educational uh, challenge examples. So you can access this chat from your breakout room at any point. Um, Jim, whenever you're ready to, to start the breakout rooms for five minutes. So we'll, we'll come back at, um, there's, so for those who are new to systems thinking, obviously maybe there's design thinking as that's also commonly used in many fields, maybe I learning design in our field, but also like futures thinking. And I think combining futures thinking that maybe is something that we would find helpful, Jed, like looking at different scenarios. And then if the system is working well, how could we then think about the future and what to introduce in the system so that we um increase the chances of that system developing into something that can match this future that we want to live in um i don't know if that's too abstract but i guess it's it's that sort mm -hmm. this sort of conversations that i think are so helpful for us to have in our field so um thank you um we have time for uh one more person maybe just unmute don't look for the hand. Um, I know there's things in the chat as well. Sorry, I haven't been able to to follow that at the same. Um, so, thank you so much for this question. I'm I'm um, I think I'm going to um, give a, an example of just something also a bit like professional and and personal. So, I recently um, joined a new workplace, a new university, UCL, um, and I think it was really important to try to understand that this workplace is a system. It's it's like a living organism, and try to to look beyond uh, the people's job titles or or just the like static strategy documents, and try to identify a bit more what are some of yeah the maybe values that my colleagues have and their mental models some of their interests some of the actions that they're taking and outside of work or as part of work what um what meetings um occur very often or you know just trying to connect with with people and with the team at like different levels and for example uh, let's say um, more of a, a strictly educational related um, example would be with staff student partnership work. So, for example, um, if you want to work with a student to help you with, I don't know, to review a, a course, maybe that's a, that's a common example. Um, if you are to use a, a systems lens, you could then um, 
think about maybe try to anticipate well what um maybe what could the student um, bring to this conversation uh, in terms of what what's happening now, even thinking about the time of the year and the timetable, how busy are they, or acknowledging that in higher education, students are not that often seen as experts when it comes to their own learning. Um, so maybe the student might feel a bit uncomfortable to share uh, and be honest. Um, because they might think they don't know enough and they don't want to, you know, for you to feel bad. So then if you think about these maybe patterns in our institutions and, and mental models, you could then make sure you put in place some things so that the student feels more comfortable to share. Um, so I don't know if those, these examples are helpful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Okay, um, so we have four minutes left, but I imagine people might have meetings at three o'clock. And as much as I'd love to uh, continue the conversation today, I think it would be good to, to wrap up um, and just to uh, have like, um, like a holiday, in the spirit of the holidays, uh, I've, pre I've prepared a, a gift for you. So this is going to be shared um, via the slides. It's like a curated list of books and articles um, and um, yeah, resources related to systems thinking. And I've arranged them with like food in mind. So if you're, if you're looking for a starter, maybe some videos or some more light touch articles about this. If you're looking for more like uh, yeah, solid veins or desserts are more, hmm, I think they're more complex and maybe a bit more detailed. Uh, so I don't know if I framed the desserts very well, but um, <laughs> I was thinking you're already full, but you want to learn more. That's how I thought about the, the desserts. Um, so if you want to continue the conversation informally, uh, we could uh, just put your email in the chat yes we'll share the menu uh, with you um like jim said we will circulate the recording and the slides uh and the menu via blog and we'll we will be emailing you um so if you want to um join like an informal reading and practice group um put your email um in the chat we will save these emails and um, we can then see maybe, I don't know, if a couple of months we could meet for one hour online and share if we came across any articles that were helpful or bring a challenge and as a group see how, how could we um, apply systems thinking to that. And if you don't feel like sharing your email today, but at some point, you feel like, oh yeah, maybe it would be nice to join this this uh, um, group, like get in touch with um, LSIG, and then we'll we'll be able to, uh, yeah, share details with you. Thank you ever so much uh, for attending, and I wonder if a little little sort of virtual round of applause might be good. The people 